Miss you. Well, the log line this season is war descends on Santo Padre. What can you tease this means as far as the motor club? You know, I mean, it's, um, I mean, this year is going to be unbelievable. Like literally, like it's going to be unbelievable. I don't think you, there's going to be things right off the back in the very, this opening episode, like is going to be, it's cinematic. Like it's, 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 it's as hit as you in the heart because there's so much truth um, just in the first 15 minutes. Like people wow. are going to be, I think they're going to be just wowed because we were wowed. I mean, it was beautiful just shooting that first episode. So just that alone. Yeah, dude, it's going to be dope. Well, showrunner Elgin James has said in season four, we look forward to diving deeper into each character's truths. What does this mean or how does this ring true for Creeper? It rings true for Creeper um, in the sense of, uh, if you know Creeper at all, Creeper has a deep, deep loyalty to the truths of the club, the bylaws and his brothers. It's the only family that he knows. And that's why he's the quietest one. You know, um, he watches everything and says very little. And that as Joseph, playing this character, I've been able to understand the importance of silence and letting it live inside and watching it flourish outside externally. And Creeper is, he is this just, this dude that sees everything, has a heart, but does all the wrong things for all the right reasons that he believes in, which is brotherhood in the club. So what to expect from Creeper different this year or more, I would say, is the humanity that he's going to bring. And that, that, is, that is hard to show a certain sector of the world humanity in individuals that live or portray a certain life because you see it as one thing. You see the negativity. You don't see family. You don't see pain, insecurities, hurt, you know, love. You don't see those things because you only see this guy's been arrested for this. And you know what I mean? Which is pretty awesome to be able to be the one to bring those truths alive. We know he's the road captain. And if you can recall, how was he originally described to you? As an ex-junkie uh, from Southern California. That was, oh, and then he, uh, he swings a hammer. You know what I mean? That was like the first, uh, he doesn't like, I didn't like guns in the beginning. Um, and that was, that was basically all they had given me. And I wrote a deep, you know, you write like, you, you keep writing the backstory as you go. Like every time we get scripts for me, I can only speak on my, my stuff. I've been writing, keep, you keep adding to the backstory because something sparks with another character, um, whether it just be eye contact or it's, it's a truthful reaction to whatever uh, the dialogue that he's bringing to the table and his truths, right? So if you stay true to that, writers are able to see that. Even the audience is able to see that. Like, did you catch his reaction to that? What are they gonna do with that? You know what I mean? Because that leads on to the next and that's the beauty of the last three seasons. That's what it's done now. So yeah, I, I, you just can't give too much on that. You know what I mean? But um, it's a, it's a beautiful thing to be able to tap in to those, those, those key moments because you never know what's gonna come. But the backstory changes all the time. Like it literally does. For me, it does. Well, that's a great segue then into my next question, which is what have you added to him over the seasons personally that maybe wasn't there originally for him? Last season, uh, it was episode 10. And we were all owning to one king. And it was a shot. I, I went and filled up the shot glasses. Creeper went and filled the shot glasses up, took it to Bishop put him down, picked it up and gave him and everybody came around and, and we everybody cheered one king and took their shots. Well, I have a water bottle in my hand. And that shows it resonated more than nobody knew. I've been having a water bottle in my hand since the very first episode. Nobody's caught on to it yet. 
which is beautiful. So the beauty in that last season was that very thing, the replies from the world on social media went bonkers. And it was beautiful because I do not drink alcohol. Personally, Joseph doesn't. And that's what I bring as that's the message that I'm giving on my own, on my own choices to Creeper, but it stays truthful with the storyline because I am an ex junkie. They didn't say what drugs I chose to portray alcohol, which still hasn't been revealed, but that was iconic in the sense that the fans just, I was not expecting that. And ever since then, they like people from that practice, whether recovery or sobriety or have certain, uh, maybe vices or issues with substance have, have spoken up and it's been beautiful, man. It's like, it's just it was one of those things that you don't expect, but that's the beauty of bringing your own truth as a creator or an artist to this, uh, to the work you do. It, it was, it's, I mean, that, that was, to me, that was beautiful because alcohol ruined my life. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm coming up on seven years without a drink and that's, that was just, it was, yeah, it was, it was beautiful. <laughs> What continues then to challenge you about your portrayal of him? Is fighting um, the violence. And, and, you know, I think Creeper, Creeper has a conscience, which, which has been established. You know what I mean? And he loves his brothers, but he's also loving people as a whole. So I, I know last year you were able to see uh, Creeper questioned a couple of things. You know what I mean? Like I, I have a couple reaction or interactions with certain individuals that allow a certain thought process. You know, like um, with Coco, for instance. You know, when he had his drug issues last year, I was able to, hey, I'm gonna hit a meeting. You know what I'm saying? Like you want to go, and he's like, hell no. You know what I'm saying? Like whatever. You know what I mean? Nobody knew about the drug issues, but Creeper felt that. You know what I mean? Because I, I'm an ex drug addict. You know, Creeper's an ex drug addict. And he felt that, but it wasn't that nobody knew until the, this was like the second episode of season three. Nobody knew. And then I changed it into, oh, yeah, I used the neti pot and it turned into a joke. How we usually do, we suppress them or we try to address them. And then the reaction is not what we want. So you can't force the message upon anybody. So you just turn it into a joke to make light of it. Um, so that that that's the hard part is still. <laughs> doing the negative, still believing doing the wrong for the right reasons, because the right reasons now are more realistically messing with Creeper. How far then do you think Creeper would go for his Santo Padre brothers? Is there boundaries he is or isn't willing to cross for them? Nah, there's no boundaries. There's none. There's none. Uh, maybe kids, you know what I mean? I know Creeper is a big Kids and women is a no-no, you know what I mean? But as far as the club and, and what represent my brotherhood comes first, he believes it. Creeper just, that's what he believes, you know what I mean? And, and, and to stay true to that is, man, is, is all I can see in the forefront as of right now. You know what I mean? I haven't seen anything that's gonna waver him, even though you know, his conscience is getting a lot stronger. It's getting a lot louder. The voices are getting a lot louder of, why are you doing this? Is it worth it, you know? Going into this season in particular, were there some ones or someone in particular that you were hoping to share more scenes with? Uh, I think, you know, anybody really and everybody, the whole, the whole crew is, is a solid brotherhood, you know what I'm saying, of love and sisterhood. There's, 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 there's beautiful people on the, on, on the crew and that's not just cast, you know what I mean? These are our, our from our creator, you know what I mean? Um, from Elgin James to uh, Vanessa to, I mean, all our camera people to our, you know, our ADs, our, our, it, it's, it's a, we got, we got a beautiful um, little family going on there, man. You know what I mean? And it's a, uh, it's dope. I mean, I mean, it really is. It's uh, I look forward to going to work and, you know what I mean? Not only for the job that we live and we do, you know what I mean? It's a dream come true, but it's just the simple fact that the people there are great to work with as well. So I would say anybody on set, you know what I'm saying, that that's in front of that camera, I'm, I'm as long as it stays within, you know, the storyline, I'm definitely 
I'm on this list, you know what I mean? Let's create something. Season has such very gritty and intense episodes. Are there some specific episodes from season four that maybe you can tease your most looking forward to fans getting to watch? Oh, episode one. Episode one, right off the bat. Episode one, let me tell you, don't don't get up. As soon as it starts, you better be there five. Whatever you have to do, use the restroom, get the popcorn, get the get the water, get your juicer, whatever you're doing, get it done, sit down and be ready because you're not gonna want to miss it. I will say it like this. And this is about as big as I can get. If you've ever seen the beginning of Saving Private Ryan, <laughs> if you've seen the beginning of Saving Private Ryan, then you are about to witness that and the beauty of Mayans. And it's, I'm telling you, it's unbelievable. You touched on it a bit. What kind of fan feedback do you tend to receive uh, to Creep or since you are a part of social media? I think uh, I think of people are gonna. A lot of people are gonna either be surprised or uh, we knew it. We knew that's exactly what Creeper was feeling because we could see it. Even though he's quiet most of the time, you could see it live in him. Um, I think that I know they're gonna. A lot of people are gonna be able to relate, and that's the big thing. Is is for me, is being able to bring Joseph, being able to tap in truthfully, with real life, and and allow it to live through the written words from our awesome writers and then bring it alive for the world to see and then hopefully see similarities rather than differences you know what i mean because that's the hugest thing i believe since elgin james has taken over he understands the life style in the sense of coming from pain being incarcerated um, and knowing what it's like to change your life completely and to now be, you know, this beacon of hope and being a light in the world and allowing that to build inside of his, man, his imagination, his truths and bringing it to life and every single character to allow them to show humanity. That's huge. You know what I'm saying? I believe that's huge because people are allowed to, you know, fall in love with that and be upset with that, but hopefully see the truth maybe within themselves and be like, oh, wow, I got too many similarities with this guy. Maybe there's something I should look at or man, you know, I'm not alone in this. You know what I mean? So I think that's that's the awesome about bringing, you know, any script to life. But right now it's mine. And it's, it's, man, I'm loving it. There is clearly such a brotherhood to this show that you guys even hang out together off set. Uh, we see the pictures that you share on Instagram and <laughs> that everybody else shares, you know, from the cast. What do you think it is about your time on this series that has bonded you all so closely? One, I mean, of course, uh, they chose us specifically, I think in that, in that, uh, in the audition, it wasn't just bringing, you know, a great skilled performer, artist, or actor, however you want to categorize yourself, but it was, getting to know us as well. You know, we have some sort of um, hand in a lot of in relationships to a lot of what they speak about, you know, or did or came across or uh, um, have changed their lives. You know what I'm saying? It has some sort of similarities with it, which I, I believe some sort of lived experience with the past, you know, with what they're representing. And I think that's where, you know, you have like Vincent Rocco Vargas, you know, decorated war hero, you know, J.D. Pardo. Um, he has a beautiful background. If you ever hear his story, uh, you got Richard, of course, Richard Cabral, Frankie Loyal, another beautiful backstory. Danny Pino, you know what I'm saying? Has a, has a beautiful backstory, especially with his family. Like, and it, from the outside, it may seem like a lot of us come from different walks of life, but we've all dealt with the same issues and we're all grateful like everybody on the cast is grateful and when you get gratitude and you become one mind and one accord and that's what i was talking about like the just the feeling of the uh, on set is just like man this feels good to come here and it's like everybody's grateful and unfortunately and fortunately with the pandemic brought that you know what i mean because you know you you started to see you know, man, just the, the sadness that it brought, you know, the, the pain that it brought a lot of families, you know, and 
you started, you, you just became grateful for just what you had in the moment. And if you're still here in the moment, no matter what it is, and you've seen that throughout our cast, throughout our crew, it was beautiful. You know what I mean? And you have to find beauty out of some, you know, the toughest times, you know what I mean? Because that's, that's what makes us, you know what I mean? And that's where you find, like, I believe hope and happiness and joy, you know what I mean? So anyways, I don't want to get off, off subject, but mm-hmm. you know what I mean, it, that, that's what brings that brotherhood together at least the last three years, you know what I'm saying? So it's grateful for that. What do you think it is done about Mayans that continues to make it such a fan favorite series? It's from the top down. We have support. They believe in us. They see the humanity in some of us with the lived experience that relates to the topic of Mayans and that lifestyle. And then they see the importance that it does for our fans of bringing that, that truth to life, but humanizing it, you know what I mean? And John Landgraf, Disney, FX, you know, Colette Wilson, Alana Rosu, like we have, we have some greats that, that get to know us, that come to the set, that talk with us, that go everywhere, that communicate, and they get to understand the people rather than overstand it. So it's not just script. Oh yeah, let's go shoot, bam, let's shoot the product out. You know, there's a, there's a family orientation there. You know what I'm saying? Like there's roots that are built and relationships that have, have built, man, that are going to go above and beyond and further and past minds, which is, which is beautiful. And I think, I believe that's why. Have you been busy working on any other projects outside of Mayans? Uh, you know, audition for a few, got tested for uh, another show. Um, got beat out, which was beautiful. You know, those are, uh, it's hard to say beautiful, but I, I'm allowed now to just focus on Creeper with Mayans. Um, but a couple of features have come, man, it's, it's beautiful to get all the way to the end, but then you're like, ah, you know what I mean? Whether you don't get it for whatever reason, but the, the, the process, cause there's no really, there's no yin or yang to auditions. You either, you go and you wow them or you don't, you know what I mean? Like if there was like a certain, uh, a formula to it, people would have that pack, it would be, it would suck. Right. You know what I mean? So, but it's, it's, it's the, uh, the joy of the hunt, man. It, it, you, you love it. You know, my biggest thing is they see, they see tattoos and I want to bring a different light to that. You know, I, w- I want to bring humanity, love and joy to that look as well. I don't want just to bring, give me your damn money or gang members. Gang man, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I want to bring something else. And I, I know I will. The, then we'll have this interview again, you and I, and we'll be talking yeah. about that maybe on Mayans or maybe on another show. I guarantee that. That would be so great to see you um, still in a dramatic way, but maybe, you know, um, in a lighter role you know, where you do get to still show your sleeves and stuff like that. And, you know, there's a lighter aspect to the role as well. It's not just you're a hardened, you know, rough dude in the role. Yeah. And that's, and that's very important to me, you know, because I'm a father of three. And uh, that's my life. You know what I mean? My, uh, my babies, you know what I'm saying? I, I, and they, they gave me, and I want, and I want to be that. Like I'm a softy, you know what I mean? I'm a big old goofball when when I'm with them, you know, to my 23 year old, to my seven year old, and um, it's it's I love it, you know. And I have to be mindful of that too, you know what I mean? Like I, I want to, and eventually I'll be able to create. I'll be able to create my create my own content, you know what I mean, yeah. for my own yeah. messages, you know. And that's the beauty of of being being able to bring stuff like this to life you know what I mean because yeah I want to make a difference in the sense of just bringing truths and letting people know that there's hope in the world that you no matter what if you're still breathing like you can still make a difference like you can still make a change like change is possible one day at a time I mean, I was going to ask you what you would like to say to everybody who are fans and supporters of the work you do, but it sounds like you've clearly given that message with the last answer, (laughs) but also at the same time, you know, these are people that love the work you do and they love seeing you on screen. So um, while that's beautiful wisdom that you've imparted, is there anything else you would like to say about the wonderful work that you do and the appreciation they have for it? You know, I just I just want to say, you know, thank all the fans, thank everybody out there that even just takes their time to to watch, listen. Um, it's just about paying it forward. 
you know, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. And I'll forever be making, you know, my amends Everyone as long does. as I'm breathing. You know, but at the same time, I, I would hope to be a beacon of light, you know, for anybody just to change, you know, or if they don't like what they're living, like I'm saying, man, if you're still breathing, man, there's still opportunity for you to make a difference, find that joy, find that happiness, you know, you can do it. I believe in you, you know, one day at a time, change is possible.